Before our next alum is honored, I'd like to show you a clip from a young Jackson Harris from our 2005 employee reunion. Take a look. Uh, I met Jackson a couple of times, and I keep telling him how lucky he is to have Jack Harris as a dad because Jack's a veteran Tampa Bay broadcaster. And I hope that, you know, are you thinking about going into the yeah. business someday? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you got a great trainer there. You've seen his outtakes. And, 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 I, and I hope we see you on the air before too long. How old are you now? 13. He's 13? 13. Okay. Hey. Now, Jackson's dad, Jack Harris, maybe you heard of him? Uh, I will tell you, when I came to Fox in 1998, my goal, I wanted to be Jack Harris. Like, I'm going to be the Jack Harris of Tampa Bay. I want everybody to know me. I want everybody to like me. And I want to go to the bar once in a while. I'm going to be Jack Harris. And doggone it, Jack, I'm still trying to get there. Harley Guacamole, he's celebrating 52 years in the Tampa Bay market, including a very successful stint at WTVT's Pulse Plus. Here now to honor him is Jackson Harris, back for another reunion with his mother, Joy Sheffield Harris. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, well, I'll tell you all something pretty interesting, and some of you may know it, but if it wasn't for WTVT, Pulse 13, as it was at the time, um, I wouldn't be here now. It all started when he was hosting Pulse Plus, very popular show at the time in the mid-80s. And at the time, he was apparently one of Tampa's most eligible men about town, <laughs> eagerly pursued by women of the area, like the debonair, suave, king of Bay Area bachelors that he was. Okay, he didn't write this. <laughs> well, that's what he tells me, at least. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, one day, Pulse Plus producer Joe Wizicki invited me, it was Joy Scheffel at the time, representing the Florida Department of Natural Resources, to demonstrate some seafood recipes. Recipes. Take a look and see how Jack maneuvered me into helping him with his apron. And into the Pulse Plus kitchen with Joy Sheffield from the Department of Natural Resources. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. I'll get my apron, huh? apron ready okay. here. Uh, mm -hmm. Seafood Marketing Division and making some... Uh, some rock shrimp Chinese. You want me to start this while you do that? Yeah, you that? go ahead and do that. Okay. This is a recipe using rock shrimp, but you can use regular shrimp in there as well. It's going to cook a little bit longer. But I have two tablespoons of chicken oil in the wok. And two, three tablespoons of chopped green onion and three tablespoons of chopped green pepper. And this needs to cook in the oil for just a couple of minutes until the vegetables are tender. And I have the temperature on here at about 300. Give me some help oh, with that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Wait, there you go. Turn around. There you go. All right. <laughs> uh, well, no, they, they've got to cook for about a minute before I get it. Oh. Smooth operator, he wasn't lying. <laughs> oh, Jack was not only popular with viewers, he became pretty popular with me, and we were married in 1986. 2022 is our 36th anniversary. It's been 10 of the happiest years of my life. <laughs> okay, now it says wait for Jack. There's a joke here, it's been 10 of the happiest years of my life. And I told Jackson, I'm going to read where it says, wait for laugh. But y'all laugh, so yeah. we're uh -huh. ready to go. So his radio career with WFLA here is uh, something, a uh, total of 44 years and over 50 years elsewhere, everywhere else here in the Tampa Bay market. And he's not only number one with mom and I, he's number one with his listeners, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, please join us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, my husband, Jack Harris. So, uh, 50 years in the Tampa Bay market, 52 now, I guess. Um, in recognition of Jack Harris's excellence in radio and television, delighting and in informing the Tampa Bay audience. And a uh, quote, a uh, favorite of mine, be yourself unless you're boring and dull. Wouldn't be someone exciting. <laughs> Yeah, this has been, I mean, my time with Pulse Plus in the 80s was incredible. I mean, one of the great things was that I thank them so much for is I met my wife. 
And I think that's something that she blames Pulse Plus for. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, having known the people and been involved with the people since going back to the days of, uh, you know, you, you think about 13 is supposedly an unlucky number. And I just think that the Tampa Bay area has been so lucky and fortunate to have Channel 13 over these years. And I remember going back to the days of Roy Leap, the iconic Roy Leap, and then up through the days of the iconic Wilson family with John and then Mark. And it's just been an incredible organization from top to bottom. But anyway, our producer on Pulse Plus was the beloved Joe Wizicki. Nobody could pronounce his name or spell it. So I used to call him Joe What's-His-Name. And he loved that too. But Joe was with WTVT for 30 years and is certainly missed. But to everyone's pleasure, Joe's grandson, Larry, became a, a very talented videographer and partnered with our former reporter, Lynn Marvin Dingfelder, to produce a series of great documentaries with Tampa Bay Area topics. And all of their projects have been released in theaters and some have been screened on PBS. And the uh, titles include the Emmy-winning JFK in Tampa, about the momentous visit by President Kennedy four days before his deadly trip to Dallas. And Goody Goody, the amazing story of the iconic Tampa restaurant, which is still around, by the way. And the fabulous Rockers Forever, Decades of Dance in Tampa. And that one's centered on the Frank Ray Dance Studio. Uh, Lynn and Larry are putting the finishing touches on the Ring of Giants Championship Wrestling from Florida, and La Gaceta newspaper, a hundred years of trilingual news. Uh, but Lynn and Larry are with us today. They are here they are, right down here. Well, Y'all are doing a great thing here for the, us and the Tampa Bay area. And I've just got to say, it's just been an incredible experience this afternoon seeing so many people that I haven't seen in so long. And you're looking so good. But <laughs> I got Charlie up here now. Uh, I, I watch Charlie every morning on TV, but I never hear anything he says because we're in the studio and we have to keep the sound off. <laughs> the best way to do it. <laughs> and, now that I'm hearing him, I think I'd rather hear him than see him. I love that guy. Oh, my gosh. When I grow up, I'm going to be Jack Harris. All right, we have other documentarians and book writers among our alums. Jack Harris, of course, wrote, his, wrote about his media career in Jack Harris Unwrapped. Jack has kindly donated a copy of his book for our Where Am I contest, and Joy has donated a copy of her cookbook. Here today is Christy Anderson, whose film about author and anthropologist Zora Neale Hurston gained accolades and can be seen on Amazon. Christy's got two other projects in the works. And former reporter and anchor Deanna Lawrence wrote a book about the news business, Sometimes a Storyteller's Journal. Todd DeBonis, who worked on the crew, has three books in a series of The Monkey King's Daughter. Former Channel 13 reporter Joe Cullum, who coined the term racial profiling, actually, has a series of mysteries featuring his fictional detective character, Max Brady. So not to be outdone, I'm going to self-publish my children's pop-up book, Famous Charlies, including <laughs> Charlie Weaver, Charlie Chaplin, and Charlie McCarthy. Sadly, none of them spelled with an EY. I'm a lawsuit now with my publisher. Uh, we ever get it made, I'll sign copies for all of you. Thank you, Mike Clark, for writing that joke. <laughs> See, I told you it would work. 